book of uh, Matthew 11. We're going to start going to text, but before that, how y'all doing, family? Chapter 11, that's our golden text for this series. We're going to go on the rest series. We've already covered foundations in it. And we, I think so far we did fear, stress. Last week I think we did anger. And this week we're going to work with understanding anxiety. Okay? Uh, and boy, it seems like every week I go through each one of them before I come down here. And just before I teach it, I get delivered. Now you know that's something. So I'm being put through the test of every one of these things I'm teaching y'all, man. Now let's go to Matthew 11, and then we're going to pray in and after we read the verses. Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey, keep me on point about praying my word in two. I like that. Uh, starting at verse 11 to 30. Ready? This is our quoting text. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart, and you shall find rest unto, unto your soul. For my yoke is easy, thank you, Lord, and my burden is light. Ooh, praise you. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for this word. This is my way to come forth. I thank you, Lord God, that you ordained and predestinated every individual in this room to be here at this time and this season. I pray that they are learning something, grabbing what they need to grab to be successful in their lives. Not that they're looking for a glory to fall out the sky, but they're only looking for you in your return from the sky. But as we learn and struggle day to day to do your will and your purpose, and not our own, and we just thank you. So, Lord, let me walk on the word of your word. Let me decrease and let you may increase. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Let the house say amen. 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 All right. Turn to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4. Now, the translation I want to read is uh, NIV. I printed it out. I'm not a fan of the NIV, but there are some things in it that I do use for translations purposes. I'm a King James person, because King James forces me to go deeper into understanding what God is saying to me. But if there's a translation that you feel easy to read, then use it. But the word anxiety or anxious is in that translation more so than the King James. I'm going to read the King James first, and then I'm going to read it in the uh, NIV for you. All right? Uh, Philippians 4. Looking at verses 6 and 7, I want to go a different way tonight, and, uh, and I'm hopefully I'm going to try my best to uh, save some time so we can go over the SRTs. I missed the last lesson, and I know that's very important to y'all, but remember, those SRTs, if you have a copy, I think Ryan, you still got more copies in the office, you make some more. If you don't have one, get one. But they're for you, that if you lack the scripture that's dealing with your emotion, there they are right in front of you. It's a tool, okay? Uh, reading verses uh, 6 and 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made un let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, I love that verse, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, in the NIV it says, Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Go to Psalms 139. Psalms 139. Psalms 139. And I need it there myself. And then we're going to go through a review of it. So 139, looking at verse 23. 139 and 23. It says, uh, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. That's good. And the uh, NIV version says like this. Search me, O God. And know my heart, test me, and know my anxious thoughts. Know my anxious thoughts. He's anxious about his thoughts. Amen? Go back to Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs 12. 
And look at verse 25, 1225. <clears throat> and it says, in the King James Version, it says, Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. Now the NIV says it like this, An anxious heart weighs a man down. A anxious heart weighs a man down. Come on now. Well, when I saw that translation, I said, ooh, got it. Right? But it says, but a kind word cheers him up. Yeah. An anxious heart weighs him down, but a kind word cheers him up. Amen? Cool. Now, let's go to a review. Rest. What is rest again? Rationally, motor speech, third. That's what we're studying, right? And we're understanding what anxiety. And through rationally, motor speech, third, I told you about by Dr. King, Dr. King, and he came up with this concept and took it into the prison. And he also came up with this equation. It's called the ABCD equation. And A representing activating event, B representing what you believe about that activating event, C is consequential feelings or the emotional feelings you get from that activating event, and then D is what you do or your behavior concerning all those things, right? But if A, the activating event, as we said before, you can't do nothing about it. It's called life. It's going to happen. Keep living. You're going to suck. won't come your way. You're smiling one day. And you're walking down the street, not expecting, next thing you know, here comes something to bring you that drink. But when it happens, it's your belief concerning it. Now, you can take the belief what we learned in the street and activate or you can take the belief that you learned spiritually and activate Now, which one do you want to use? Because which one you use is going to determine your emotional state. Amen. Am I going to love them through it or am I going to beat them through it? The activating event. You can't do nothing about it. Just keep living as long as you're living, you're going to have an activating event. I had a few of them all week long. <laughs> but guess what? The end of the week, I got a great activating event. You know, with choices to make that boy got for her. I love y'all, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm ready to fly away. Let me tell you, boy. And the devil was giving me enough money to do it, too. It was great. I mean, offers were coming my way, boy. I'm talking about, boy, hula hula land, boy. All right. Hey, Warren, we thought you were going to be a boss in Hawaii on our new air base, start our new department. I was like, what? <laughs> so I said, no, Lord, you call me here. Amen. Activating event. So I took my belief in the Lord to say, I'm staying here. Amen. And my emotion said, I love y'all. And what? My behavior said, I'm going to preach tonight. Amen. Amen. I made a better choice. Amen. And I am not money or material things, but I can care less about it. I can't take it with me. But guess what? I can't take with me. The souls that I fed and get a reward from Jesus when I stand before him and he says, Well done, my good and faithful servant, enter into thy rest. Enter into thy rest. I can't wait for that day. Because I'm scared for him to tell me, Depart from me, I never Amen. do that. Woo! I don't want to hear that. So again, activate the we can't do nothing about, but our belief about it, which should be something spiritual to change our emotions, which will do what? Make sure our behavior lines up. Then we need to learn how to do a TRE, trace and race, and replace the rooted issues that's causing us to do the stupid things we're doing. But if you don't find the root, and you just pull up, how many of you have pulled weeds up out the ground, come back next week, it's still tall in the grass? You know why? Because you ain't pulled it up from the root. Amen. Even Jesus said, let the tares and the wheat grow up together because you can't recognize the difference until they get fully grown. Then he, the tares are the ones he pull up and throw away. Don't be a tear, people. You need to be some wheat, all right? Then we need to understand what is causing us a self-destruction thought. Because the moment I used to get money, the self-destruction thought was, and I look for it every week, let me go get high. Self-destruction thought. As a matter of fact, it used to turn my stomach. I would get anxiety. I would get anxiety. My stomach would turn. I would get diarrhea. Come on, y'all. Come on. As soon as the money hit, and I was cool till I got some money, the activating event. What was my belief about the activating event? I can get high. <laughs> but what was my emotion about it? I can't wait. And once I got it, I fired it up. My behavior. Got it. So now I need to take that self-destructive thought and say, I need an SRT, scripture replacement thought, to change that stinking thing in a second. That's what it's about. That's the formula. That's the formula. But the thought only comes for a minute. And the devil just wants you to operate on that single thought. But if you change it, it's gone. It's gone. Now, this takes practice. 
It takes practice. And it just doesn't cover drug addiction. It covers every single behavior that's going on inside of us. That's negative. Amen? Amen. Now, have I been practicing over the last few weeks? No, I've been doing the test, baby. I really have. And I said, here I am teaching about activating events, and here come mine, and I'm still, what? Going on the belief about the activating event instead of putting something spiritual to it, moving on with my emotions so that I can go in and act out in the right behavior. So I'm still practicing too. Okay, but don't think the, the teacher up here has got this together. That's why I'm reteaching it. I had it together before I was single. I mean, before I was married. You know what I mean? Because I learned to operate single. But now I'm married, and then I have to relearn it all over again because it's just not about me. Amen. Now I'm responsible for people on the job. It's just not about me. Now I'm responsible for people that come into friendship. It's just not about me. Amen. So now my whole thinking had to change because it's not about me. Amen. Amen. Well, let's read some understanding about the problem of anxiety. Ready? Understanding the problem. What is anxiety? Anxiety is a distress about future uncertainty. It stresses you out about future uncertainties. It is characterized by mental agitation and uneasiness. It may be mild or severe. Amen. I know I used to hit it and just get more anxiety. Amen. There's some drugs that do that. We're going to be talking about that later. But I decided to go through some scriptures first concerning it, and then we're going to read a little bit out of the book, and then we're going to hit our SRTs. Okay? Uh, number two, it primarily has to do with what may happen in the future, either near or distant. How many of you be thinking about your future? You want something to happen. You want a job and you're anxious about it, or you even begin to believe that you can't get it. And it is you even more anxious. Or you say the job interviews today, you can't even rest that night. You don't get to come on, because you don't know how it's going to go the next day or in the morning. Amen. Every time I got a job interview, I tossed and turned at 4 a.m. and had to be there at 8. Or I smoked my way until it was time to go to the interview. Then when I got there, I was like, this. <laughs> Come on. And he looked at me, you all right, sir? Yeah, I'm fine. Then what else was sweating? Come on. Sweating up a storm and the whole place is air conditioning. <laughs> Come on, Oxy. See? <laughs> You sit in an air conditioned building and you dropping drops of sweat. God, you're anxious. And you've been smoking crack all night. <laughs> hey, brother. All right, brother. All right. What causes anxiety? Anxiety is caused by real or imagined threats to our well being. It's kind of like skits into me again, right? Think things are coming and ain't coming. Amen. We feel vulnerable and inadequate, inadequately protected against these threats. Threats such as social rejection, physical injury, or disease, poverty, death, and wide range of other threats. Some of these threats even come out of our own imagination. Especially if we get hot for the love. Woo. Number two, anxiety has three main elements. Here we are. A, insecurity. Something bad is going to happen. Always so insecure. Amen. Helplessness. There's nothing I can do. You know, just there ain't nothing I can do. Well, man, I'm just tired. I don't do nothing. Hmm. And here's the one that really kills me. Because I live in isolation. You begin to isolate yourself. Put yourself in the corner. Wear a bunch of headphones. <laughs> Act like you're an entity unto yourself. Think you safe because you and the headphones in the garden growing vegetables. <laughs>
Jake, I decided not to bring him. He's the best example, but I knew it wouldn't go across. So I decided to bring the disciples themselves and what they did. Amen. We can get into that. All right. Isolation. There is no one to help me. These causes may operate individually or in various combinations. Emotionally, they cause just as much anxiety if they are imagined as if they are real. Anxiety is a form of fear and must be recognized as such. With an understanding of the problem, we are closer to the what? Solution. Amen? Let's go to John chapter 20 and look at some of the people. John chapter 20. I really looked at it in the story last night. Actually, I was uh, into a heavy session, and I decided, you know, I, I waited until the last minute to study this thing because of the things I've been going through all week. And I said, God, I didn't study this week. I don't have nothing. But don't you know God is good? All, all this stuff was just thrown together in a matter of moments. And I said, God, I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing. And all he said is, you got me. So this just came out of the blue. I mean, the book was there. But I like, I'm trying to do something different so that y'all can see the Bible relates to you. I want you to know that you're not the only one who's going through these things. There have been people in the Bible and people you're sitting next to that have been through this. So Amen. people have been through this stuff 2,000 years ago, conquered it, and Jesus conquered it all for you on the cross. Amen? He's been through every one of these emotions we're talking about, but yet did no sin. Amen? Amen. Let's look at a couple of disciples. Let me give you a little background about this. This is when Jesus was already crucified. He was buried and put in the tomb, right? So the disciples were in fear. Now everybody knows the 12 disciples all betrayed him. But we only recognize one as Judas, right? Because Judas lost his mind and hung himself, all right? <laughs> but they all betrayed him. Because the only ones that showed up was Peter. I mean, Peter betrayed him with the denial. The only one that showed up at the cross basically was John. You know what I mean? But they all betrayed him. They all ran out and hid themselves. But they went to the tomb. Mary went to the tomb to go see, you know, to go anoint the body. When she got there, it was gone. And it was two angels, one sitting at the head, one sitting at the feet. And she said, what you done with my Lord? And they said, he's risen, he's gone, he's not here. When she walked out, she saw a man and thought it was a God. Because Jesus had on his glorified body. And he said, Mary, touch me not. Touch me not. She said, Lord, he said, yeah, because I have not ascended unto my father. But go tell my brothers. I have risen. That's the first preacher, because anytime you tell Jesus tell you to go proclaim something to somebody, that's what preacher means. I proclaim her truth. So she went to go proclaim the truth. And you know if they put a woman in there to do that, they were changing tradition, because women weren't allowed to speak nothing. So for her to go tell men he is risen, whoo, she was proclaiming the truth. But they still didn't receive from her. <laughs> but a couple of them took off running. They were running to the tomb to go see what she said. Right? They were running, and people were running with them. Come on, come on. That's funny. Bro. Go ahead, go ahead, hurry up. But that's funny. They didn't receive her. They didn't receive her. But they took out her. They took off her. Now that's crazy. I know. I know. Why do you not receive something that somebody gave you, but you automatically go do what the person said? Because curiosity. Oh. Curiosity. Oh, uh, just in case. And they've been hiding out with anxiety. They've been waiting on this. So that means they have not been believing it the whole time. So I'm going to come. I'm jumping my ass. <laughs> so they take off running. And Peter ran away with him, but the scripture said Peter couldn't keep up. <laughs> the scripture said they are ready. <laughs> but when they got there, they saw nothing. Amen? So what did they do? Jesus ain't there. They go back in the room and hide. Now we're going to pick it up from here to start at verse, where am I going to start at? Verse 19. Ready? John 20, starting at verse 19. Ready? Now Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended unto my Father, but go. Go to my brother and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord. See, here it goes. And that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut. Please pay attention to that. When the doors were shut, where the disciples uh where the disciples were assembled for what? Fear of the Jews. In anxiety. In anxiety, just say fear is one of them. One of the scriptures. So, in fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be still. Now, how did he walk through the door, the door being shut? Nobody owned it. He didn't knock. He walked right through with a glorified body. He was letting us know this is the new body. 
everybody, we're going to get to y'all. Amen. 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 This, this body can't walk through a door. Amen. Now he rose from the dead and did corruption. Amen. Let's read verse 20. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hand and his side, because he was pierced with nails and stabbed in his side. Then, were the disciples glad. Now, what did they do? They got some proof. Ain't that something? We got to see it before we believe. Yeah. I ain't going to take the word for it. Ah, uh, come on. Mary told them they didn't believe it. Mary told them they didn't believe it. When they saw the Lord, they were glad when they saw the Lord. Verse 21. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Now watch this. He was so transparent that he walked through the walk, or walked through the door. That was, when he walked through the doors, what did he destroy people? He destroyed fear. He delivered them from fear. So that let me know in my ministry, this is why I'm the way I am. I'm transparent. There ain't no sin you can throw on me or embarrass me with because I tell you myself. I'm transparent. When you're transparent, you get delivered. You know why? Because the devil want to keep you lying about your condition. The devil want to keep you hiding your condition. The devil want to keep you away from telling the truth about your condition. But if you're transparent, nobody can blame you for nothing. Nobody can stop you from nothing. You don't even walk in fear because of it. But if you're not, you're embarrassed. You're fearful. You're full of anxiety and shame. But if I can tell you straight up, no, man, I got just as many faults as you do. My major problem in my life is pride. And every time I tell that, the devil shakes. You know why? Because he wouldn't want me to tell it. You don't want me to tell you. Most men got pride problems. Amen. And most women got stubborn problems. So when you got pride and stubborn meeting up with one another, it may be fun in the flesh, but it's hell in the spirit. Amen. Because sooner or later you won't bump heads. Amen. But nobody, when, when do stubborn listen to pride? And when do pride listen to stubborn? It don't work. Amen. All right. Let's keep reading. Verse uh, 22. And when he has said this, no, go up to verse 21. Then Jesus said unto them, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive you the Holy Ghost. Now, ain't that something? Amen. He breathed on them. Woo! I thought they were supposed to get it in the book of Acts in the upper room. Come on. But apparently, he breathed on them. Receive you the Holy Ghost. And when he said, Now, whosoever sends you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sends you retain, they are retained. Now here's us. You ready for us? I know people don't like this description, but I'm getting ready to give it to you. Now, watch this. Verse 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus. That word Didymus means a twin under him. So his name means a twin under him. Looking up people's names in the Bible is very important. That'll tell you what their character is. Amen? So Didymus was not with them when Jesus came. So Thomas went there the first time. See, I, when I first studied this story, I thought he walked through the walls once and destroyed fear. But Thomas wasn't there. So let's see what Jesus does. Verse 25. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see his hands, and the print of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side. I ain't believe it. That's right. Ain't that us? Show me. Because I don't believe that. Matter of fact, I don't trust you. You better show me. See, I like Thomas. Thomas was bold enough to show me. And he got a bad reputation because he was called what? Down in time. No, show me. I don't like calling down in Thomas no more. We been through too much. You got to show me, Lord. I've been through hell and hot water. Show me, Lord. Every time I called on your name, you wasn't there. So now show me. You said you want to rise. We buried you. I ain't seen you. They told me you walked through the door. No, show me. Ain't nothing. How many hours we been there talking about? Show me. And the cop shows you the cell. 